Chris the Bergeron zone. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hello. Thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Myrick O'Connell is a uh, Worcester firm. We have, we're in Worcester and Westboro. Uh, we have about 65 lawyers. I'm the elder law one. That means I'm the old guy. Um, so I do, I do a, that whole set of cluster of issues dealing with, with elders. Uh, and so I have met some of you who are in the room. I'm sorry I haven't met everybody. Um, and with me today to co-present are Linda Sullivan and Deb Gittner from Elder Care Resources. Uh, they're geriatric care managers kind of here in the, uh, we, we use them a lot because they're in the, the boroughs, what we'll call the boroughs plus area as well as Metro West. Um, and we do quite a bit of work there. Uh, and, and we asked them to co-present because really this, what this is about is something that uh, the driving forces for which I think will be VNAs, geriatric care managers. So I think that, that it, it's really kind of an important topic. So Jimmo versus Sibelius uh, I think has the potential to, f to kind of fundamentally change um, uh, the way in which care is getting delivered and the access to care for elders both who are on 60-day plans working through the VNAs and, and for elders who are in nursing homes. Next slide. Uh, and I'm just going to mention that I plagiarized with their permission uh, from uh, some of these slides from the Center for Medicare Advocacy because it was them, next slide, it was the Center for Medicare Advocacy that actually brought a claim, uh, next slide please, that actually brought a claim against CMS, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Uh, and the reason why they brought that claim, there had been a couple of federal cases dealing with this issue before. They decided to do this more as a class action so that it would have national import. The reason why they brought the case was to deal with that. As many of you know, or as you have all heard, you've all had, or how many here are, are, are um, home health agency folks? Right? So, so you've all, heard, or geriatric care managers, you've all heard it said for your patients who are in a nursing home who are, or who are at home, oh no, I'm sorry, their services, Medicare isn't paying anymore, they've plateaued. They're no longer in need of services. They're in, not improving, they're stable, they're chronic. Um, there had been, th it, and, and it was all kind of, always kind of known that that was the, was the standard. Um, but it turned out that that's really not what the Medicare law said. And there had been a couple of federal court cases in various places around the country over the last 10 years that had indicated that, that the standard regarding whether or not you're entitled to care isn't whether or not you're getting better, but whether or not you need the care, whether or not you need skilled services. Next slide. So then came, then came Jimmo, uh, and Jimmo, uh, Jimmo versus Sibelius, um, Jimmo um, is, is actually a real person. Mrs. Jimmo lives in Vermont. Uh, the Centers for Medicare Advocacy brought this case along with Vermont Legal Services, uh, with Ms. Jimmo, and with a set of national organizations, among others the Alzheimer's Association, uh, participated as one of the plaintiffs in this case. Um, and the goal of the case was once again to bring up this issue and to bring it up in a way that was going to be, have a national standard. Well, the Center for Medicare, their CMS, tried to get the case dismissed. They failed and then CMS settled. And the federal judge approved the settlement last year. Uh, and the, the terms of the settlement, next slide please. The terms of the settlement uh, are that that they are supposed to be notifying everybody, or they were, to be notifying everybody in the country by January, by changing their manuals, that, the, that this plateauing policy had changed. Um, and, they, and part of the agreement with CMS, in the agreement, amazingly enough, CMS actually said, oh, plateauing was never really the standard, right? The standard always really was whether or not you needed the skilled care. It certainly, that certainly has amazed a lot of people who are in the field. But that's what they said. So they said, um, the question is, can um, serv services can be skilled and covered when services are needed to maintain, prevent, or slow deterioration? So up, to, up until now, it had always been assumed that, you, that, it, that either if you are in the nursing home because you got there because you had had your three days at the hospital, and by the way, that hasn't changed. You still need to be demonstrating you've had three days 
stay in the hospital before you can go to the nursing home and qualify for Medicare services. But it was always assumed that when you were in the nursing home, or if you were on a 60-day plan at home because you were, were homebound and you needed the care at home, that you had to be getting better. Um, now the standard is, um, do you need those services at home because you are homebound? You still have to show that you're homebound, right? But because you're homebound and either the services are needed to make you better or the services are needed in order to keep you on a plateau or the services are needed to slow down your rate of deterioration, right? So pretty much all of the places where a skilled service might be needed. Now, uh, what this has not changed, next slide please, uh, it, is, it's not, it has not changed the, the, the basic, well, why are you there in the first place, right? Are you, you're in, you are getting Medicare services because you're homebound because there is a need for skilled care. So the, so the real question is, is there a need for skilled care? Either actually to provide the services themselves or to supervise the providing of those services and to monitor those services, right? So, and that, and that, those things had always been in there in the first place and those are still there, um, but then the, the issue is, it's regardless of whether or not you can show that someone is getting better. Next slide, please. So, uh, what they've said is an individual assessment of each um, patient is going to be required. There are no more assumptions that certain kinds of patients, because by virtue of being at home, aren't going to qualify. Um, they, the, the, you're supposed to be looking at, and you, the nurses, are supposed to be looking at the unique clinical condition of a patient that may require specialized skill, right? You're supposed to be really analyzing these individuals. Next slide. Um, and then the settlement agreed that the great manual, the, the, the CMS policy manual, the 1500 page uh, book that, that governs or, or that, the, the medic, that the MACs, the contractors who administer um, Medicare, because as you, many of you know, CMS doesn't actually do its own work. They don't actually deal with patients and pay the bills or any of those things. They subcontract um, with contractors around the country to do that. And what they agreed was that by January of this year they would change their manual so that the instructions to the contractors would make all of this clear. And they finally did that. They changed the manual and the manual changes were, were uh, issued on January 7th of this year. Uh, next slide. And once again, the manual changes emphasized that they were just meant to clarify and not change any old CMS policy. As a matter of fact, CMS uh, actually says that they don't think that, this, uh, that these changes in policy are going to cost them any money. An amazing thought. But we're going to get to why it is that they think that. Next slide. Um, so, in order to meet the criteria, we're just going to kind of go back to what the criteria now are, even after GMO. Uh, if you are in going, if you're, if you're getting Medicare, to get Medicare in a nursing home, you have to show that you've been in a hospital for at least three days. By the way, C the Center for Medicare Advocacy is going to do another case in which they're challenging that, but they're not, they're not really hopeful about their chances of success on that. Um, you have to need daily skilled care. The whole reason why you're getting uh, Medicare to cover nursing home days is because you need, it, the nursing home needs to demonstrate that the level of skilled care they need can't be provided at home because it needs to be provided practically daily. So you need to be able to show that you need five days a week at least of physical therapy or OT or that you need uh, seven days a week of combined nursing and physical or OT. So what is considered skilled? Next slide. Um, and by the way, and, and, oh, that's right. So what is considered skilled? Now that the plateau as a standard or as a way of getting Medicare out of the case is no longer there, this is going to become a big deal, right? The question is what is considered skilled? Now that's their definition. So inherently complex that it can be safely and effectively performed only by or under the supervision of professional or technical or, or uh, technical personnel. So if you can't show that that kind of skill is needed in the nursing home practically all the time or at home a lot, well then Medicare isn't going to provide the coverage. The coverage. Um, in addition, the services have to be ordered by a physician. They have to be under a written plan of care. 
Uh, if you are at home, the beneficiary has to be confined to home. Now, confined to home, as pointed out, does not mean confined to, confined to bed. It doesn't even mean confined to home like absolutely all the time. The, the, the Medicare, the manual is clear that, that you can be confined to home, quote unquote, even though you're going out to church or to the synagogue and even though you're going out to a lot of stuff, uh, as long as it can be demonstrated that to do that requires a great deal of exertion. Like it's really, really hard for you to do that. And, and, and therefore, the notion is you can't be getting these services by going to the hospital or by going to a clinic. You need to be getting them at home because you're homebound. Next slide. 